Today, let's learn about the application scenarios of Topper Access. The first scenario is the central office scenario. Large access devices, usually installed in indoor cabinets, are deployed in central office equipment rooms, and the copper access distance can reach 1,000 meters or longer. The capacity of a common device at the central office is 768 to 1,024 lines, and multiple devices are installed at one central office. The central office scenario has distance restrictions. This scenario is the most common scenario where the ADSL or VDSL2 technology is used. In this scenario, the actual rate is 2 to 12 megabit per second, and the maximum rate reaches 20 megabit per second. The central office scenario is the most common scenario, and it has the highest demand for rate acceleration through FTTX technologies. In the fiber to curb scenario. A medium-sized access device is usually deployed in the outdoor cabinet near the cross-connecting box (CCB), and the copper access distance varies from 100 meters to 500 meters. The capacity of a common access device in this scenario is 192 to 384 lines, and that of some devices can reach 768 lines or higher. In the FTTC scenario. Usually, the vectoring or super vector technology is used, which provides a 50 to 100 megabit per second bandwidth. The FTTC solution is the mainstream solution for copper line acceleration based on the original site or site moving downwards. The fiber to the building (FTTB) scenario is the access scenario that supports the most diverse device deployment modes. The access device can be installed near a cable distribution box (CDB) that is a distribution point (DP) between devices in the building, in the corridor, on an exterior wall, on a utility pole, or in a manhole. The copper access distance varies from 100 meters to 500 meters. Similar to FTTC scenario, in the FTTB scenario, small access devices are installed in outdoor cabinets. Besides small-sized devices that integrate the protection, power supply, and the access functions and have high environment adaptability are used. In the FTTB scenario, the vectoring super vector or G dot fast technology is used, which provides a bandwidth of 100 to 500 megabit per second. The capacity of the access device is 16 to 256 lines. The FTTB solution is the mainstream solution for copper line acceleration based on side moving downwards. The fiber to the door FTTD solution is a supplementary solution for fiber to the home FTTH. This solution reuses twisted pairs to resolve the difficulties in drop cable deployment. In the FTTD scenario, the copper access distance is usually within 100 meters. The access device is located outside the door of a user's home or in the corridor on the same floor. Because the copper line used in this scenario is short, a single port device or an integrated device with fewer than eight ports is used, and the G dot fast technology is used. In this scenario, the bandwidth can reach over 100 megabit per second and even 1,000 megabit per second. Which is comparable with that provided by the FTTH solution. Finally, let's make a summary of this lecture using twisted pairs as the transmission medium. A copper access network consists of an access device at the central office, a copper line distribution network, and a user terminal. In ascending order of the capacity, the copper line distribution network consists of a main distribution frame (MDF), street CCB, corridor CDB. An indoor splitter from the central office side to the user side. The DSL access technology evolves from ADSL and a VDSL, which provide a bandwidth lower than 100 megabit per second, to vectoring and super vector, which provide a bandwidth higher than 100 megabit per second, and then to G dot fast, which provides a bandwidth of 1,000 megabit per second. During the evolution. The access technologies provide higher bandwidths, use higher frequency bands, and support longer copper access distances. As the access device is deployed closer to the user side, 
Corporate access scenarios expand from central office to FTTC, FTTB, and FTTD. That's the end of this lecture. Thank you.